Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, we're looking at Indeed's job numbers, and this is for employers that use Indeed to find people to work for them. So Indeed may not be the best. I actually don't like it when it comes to an actual website. I think it's it reminds me of like Craigslist, and I've had bad experiences with it with like uh, recruiters on there posting the same job over and over again, things like that. I think Indeed over the past couple of years has gotten better at cleaning some of that stuff up. And their filters are a little bit better. But anyway, this this video isn't about whether Indeed is good or not. They are the number one jobs website out there. So I'm looking at their data uh, for a year-over-year -year perspective between June of this year and June of last year, 2024. Uh, we're in the month of July, so they don't actually release the numbers for July until we're in August. And ultimately, that is where I want to start seeing job growth. And um, that's going to be related to the tax changes that occurred with the, the big, beautiful bill thing. Um, so from a completely non-political standpoint, like I don't want any politics coming out of my mouth in this channel. So I refrain from all of that. I'm just reporting on the facts here. So that that's really all I'm going to say about that. Um, so all that said... When I'm looking at these numbers here, there's a few things that jump out at me. Um, so for starters, the biggest one is that the amount of jobs posted is relatively, I would say, stable. So here is the market trend for jobs. So this is the amount of jobs posted. And if I'm looking at this, um, we have 17,927 in the year of 2024, so one year ago. And then this year, there's 17,874. So that is literally a 53 job change uh, year over year, which clearly isn't great um, because obviously the job market sucks. But at least what we're seeing is we're not seeing uh, year over year like it being much worse than it was last year. So basically it's the same amount of jobs uh, that are being posted. Um, you know, one of the big things is job seekers. So job seekers is down to 272,201. And just for the record, I switched it over to 2024 here. So uh, you could see jobs from June, 2024. So you know that I'm not making this stuff up, but what I'm going to do is report on the differences between the two years. So it's uh, broken down for you. But anyway, you could see this job seekers of last year is 365,839. So between last year and this year, we've actually seen a reduction of 93,638 people looking for a job with the software engineer in the title. So that number is down 26%, and that actually has me a little confused. Why would we be down 26% on the amount of people looking for a job? And there's actually multiple reasons, I think, that could explain that. Um, number one, a lot of people probably are just simply giving up, right? So um, there could be basically just, you know, I think when everything started happening, Everybody wanted a remote job, and I think a lot of people were applying for jobs that were remote, and you had a lot of job seekers for those remote positions. And then once we started seeing the remote disappearing, um, I think that explains probably why there's a whole lot less job seekers, because those jobs, the remote ones, sort of dropped over the year. Um, there's probably also few, well, there's definitely fewer layoffs in 2025 compared to 2024, and probably 2023. Um, so that could be explaining it. There's probably people that left the job market entirely. So I know that some people, especially with the whole learn to code uh, 10 year run that we had, basically, uh, there's probably a lot of people that gave up in that regard, which is unfortunate. Um, and then there might be a situation where like maybe developers are getting a little bit more um picky when it comes to the positions that they're applying for maybe they've been burned too many times on on uh jobs that they applied for and just had you know all the, the the ghosting and just simply getting no response at all on your application so maybe that's starting to rub off on people and they're just simply not applying as much so another thing that correlates with that is this job seekers per job 
Uh, it's actually, it was 20 last year and it's 15 this year. So a five, uh, number five change. So basically lower competition per job doesn't feel like it, but it seems that these figures are showing that the competitive score. Now this, um, if I look over uh, the infographic here of what this is, it says score depicts how competitive the labor market is for the selected title location compared to the national average calculated using job seekers per job data for June 2025. So last year's number was 77 and this year's is 81. So how could we have more competition this year if less people um, are looking for a job and really the the reason is probably the bar is much higher so employers are being much more selective uh, they're definitely demanding skills that that we're seeing from like senior engineers that it really like 10 15 years of experience and even if you have that you're getting uh, shut down I would say probably more specialized jobs like Python and, and machine learning and, and things of that nature um, Companies like Google and things are probably still getting swamped with tons of applications. So that could be skewing this competitive score. And one of the things also is that this is sort of a made up indeed thing. So it's not raw math. It's like th this is engagement levels when it comes to like clicks and resume matches. And they also look at like historical applicant quality, uh, job ad attractiveness. And um, bottom line is that it's sort of a a made up figure, but it does show that, that we do have some seriously high competition in 2025 for pretty much every job that's posted. Now, when we go down here to the average salary, so an average salary of a senior engineer, or not even a senior engineer, just software engineer, is 124,331. Uh, that actually makes sense to me. Um, you can see 270 on the high end. Staff engineers, I'm seeing from a lot of um, larger companies, I mean, they're getting anywhere from 200 to 300 uh, for many jobs at least in the dc area so i would actually agree that this is probably a pretty average salary for most software engineers and this figure unfortunately they don't release it from last year but it appears to be stable i would assume that this is a stable number now another thing that we don't know is that the number of employers um so the employers hiring last year was 5,063 and this year there's 4,512. So there's actually a decrease in the amount of employers hiring. And that actually probably explains some of the, the competition as well. So even though less people are looking, there's less employers out there uh, providing jobs. This unemployment percentage of 4.1% is probably not accurate. I think this number is always uh, pretty inaccurate when it comes to whether the government releases it or indeed here. All right, so some, some of these other figures, top employers by clicks, you have Amazon and Apple at the top of the list. So banks, uh, Oracle here, uh, Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics, those are both um, military government contractors. And then you have resumes. So Indeed probably tries to show that more people are using Indeed, so they want to actually report this number is going up every month. I actually would take this with a grain of salt. Um, and then... You look at the most common locations. This, I also don't necessarily know if it's accurate. Maybe because there's so many layoffs in the D.C. area that I don't see D.C. on here. But D.C. is typically one of the top markets in tech. So I'm not really sure I, I agree with these values either. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I guess a lot of it does make sense. But my question is, where is D.C.? I, maybe they're after here. But uh, anyway, that seems a little odd. So the bottom line, according to Indeed, I, I would say that what we're seeing is that it's better in some ways year over year. So there's um, less competition for individual applications. Uh, demand hasn't totally collapsed. Salaries seem to be relatively stable. Um, the downside is that there's definitely no job growth. Uh, we definitely have market stagnation. Uh, employers are being more selective. There's less employers hiring. And um, yeah, so... The big thing, though, is that the tax bill that just recently went into effect that definitely affected sh the startups by uh, quite a bit, really every tech company when it comes to research and development, um, which is pretty much all of software, 
they all took a major hit with that tax change in 2022. So that got changed this month, July 4th um, of this year, 2025. We're not going to see those numbers until a couple of months down the road, but I do plan to keep uh, monitoring this and seeing where we are. My guess, though, is that we are going to see a spike in job growth. Um, when you look at this article here, this is a, a, a tax accounting firm for a large business, and um, their their outlook is that we're going to see uh, some some major boosts probably. So, like, here's an example: 100% bonus depreciation. Uh, Bon businesses can immediately expense qualifying assets placed in service after January 19th, eliminating the previously scheduled phase down. This change is expected to drive accelerated capital investments across industries. Leather. The biggest thing to all of the job market is probably number three on here that the bill addresses. So domestic research costs are now fully deductible under new section 174A. Foreign R&D must still be amortized over 15 years. Companies would capitalize domestic research and development expenses from 2022 to 24, can elect a catch-up deduction, which could significantly improve cash flow for firms engaged in innovation. Additionally, eligible small businesses may elect to retroactively apply full expensing to tax years beginning after 2021, allowing them to amend prior returns and recover previously amortized costs. So that is the good news. Is this going to be the turnaround year? Is this the start of the turnaround that we needed in the tech market for the last three years now? I'm optimistic. I definitely have concerns and doubts when it comes to corporate greed. But this is definitely probably the best thing that we've had happen to the job market for software development in, in many years now. All right, everybody, uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Check out my website, CodeHawk.com, for more material from me. Also, if you're into game uh, games, uh, I have this VR game coming out at the end of the year that I worked on for two years, King Crab. Um, I really love it, actually. I, I really am proud of how it came together. And that said, um, please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you, and have a good night. Bye.